Hey, Robert. Hey, E.J. You've been doing an awesome job on these backhoe parts. Thank you. I'm enjoying it. We have a surprise for our viewers. We do? Mm -hmm. What is it? This. Woo! Sexy! <laughs> <laughs> I like your shirt. Hi folks, E. Chip and Robert, and uh, this is the first iteration of our channel t-shirt. Uh, no, they're not for sale. If you want one, we can point you toward the person who made them for us, and uh, you can buy them directly from her, and we're not going to make a dime off it. That's not what we're about. We would like your opinion, though, on the shirt. Here's the front, here's the back, and you tell us how you think it could be different. We thought we would show you some of the things that Robert has been working on so diligently and she's doing a fantastic job. In our last video you saw the starter that you know we restored. She did an awesome job on that. But just to give you an idea, this is the kind of stuff that we're beginning with. You know, this is what it looks like coming off the backhoe. And then, you know, like in the case of this dashboard, um, Robert's taking this stuff, putting it on the grinding wheel and getting all the old paint and things like that off of it. Um, when it's clean, she then primes it and paints it, you know, until we come up with something like this, like in the case of this air cleaner uh, cover. And, and it just, uh, you know, she's doing a fantastic job. I wanna show you this one right here. This is, these old backhoes and old vehicles actually had permanent oil filters in them. This, this canister is really thick metal and it has a top on it, you screw it off and there was a, an element oil uh, filter insert that you put in there and then pull out and change out every once in a while. So this is basically a permanent part of the machine. But this thing looked like this when she started and now look at it, it's beautiful. So Robert, you're doing a superb job. Thank you. On this stuff, you're doing an excellent job and I. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It is my thing. I do like using the bench grinder. You like doing that? Yes. The rust like, monkey. It is. That's my favorite thing because I can't really mess it up. <laughs> I was watching a video from a channel uh, that I really enjoy called The Green Dream Project. Jim and Jessica, they're a couple uh, who live out in, I think it's southeast Arizona. And, you know, like us, they're sort of starting out on this journey. Uh, they're both uh, permaculture uh, uh, type folks, and they have a lot of really cool videos on, uh, you know, the flora and fauna of the Southwest, um, permaculture ideas, the things that they're doing around their property. And they put out a video, I think it was oh, a week or so ago, uh, that was called Five Steps to Finding Yourself and Your Style. I really appreciated that video. I encourage you to go see it and uh, to check out their channel if you haven't already i'll put a link uh, to that video in the description below but uh, one of the things that jessica said in that video that i thought was really cool was she said don't cloak yourselves in others expectations really uh isn't that a lot of what american modern life or modern american life is you know we find ourselves living under societal expectations and I think this off-grid homesteading movement is really people's way of saying no I don't want to live under those expectations anymore I don't want to live like that anymore I want to live in my own terms as much as I can it doesn't mean that you know you're becoming a hermit it doesn't mean that you're withdrawing from society really it just means that you I guess just don't want to live like everybody else expects you to really that's kind of been what society is about forever mm -hmm. living up to the expectations of the society so that you fit in and you do the right thing and you're easily controlled and things like that mm -hmm. but then if you do the off-grid thing or something out of the norm, then you're sometimes labeled a recluse or some sort of dysfunctional type. <laughs> well, 
mean, really. Or yeah, I suppose. Something weird. Some sort of dysfunction. I don't know. But... I guess we're at the age where we really don't care so much about that, do we? Well, I mean, <laughs> no, but for me, all of this is going through life always doing what people expect you to do. That's kind of my big thing. And I always call it running and gunning and just going and going. My kids are all grown now, but when they were younger, we were always doing some sort of athletics every weekend. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed that. But <clears throat> I think in today's world, we lose some aspects of quality of life because we are constantly going. For all of our running and gunning. Yeah. Right. I mean, for me, it was getting up at 6 o'clock, getting the kids to school. And I'm a teacher, so I'd go to school. Fortunately, when they were young, we were in the same district. And then come home, get people ready for softball practice, wrestling practice, barely have time to fix anything for dinner, most of the time having to stop at fast food places taking them to practice, to games, getting back in at 10, 11, midnight, you know, starting it over the next day. Mm -hmm. And every weekend, you know, always going like that, constantly. And not really ever what I think having time, true time to really kind of live, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Now that they're grown, I really want to go into a different... I want my life to look differently now because they're they're on their own and that gives me the freedom and the opportunity to pursue something that I've wanted to pursue since my kids started to get older and I've wanted to downsize I've wanted to live with less but that's where I've been for a few years now and contentment is an, a way for each of and I to kind of embrace that life that we both really desire. Mm -hmm. Their whole point, I think, to finding your style and, you know, uh, determining how you want to live and things like that is, you know, you wouldn't wind up in that trap in the first place. You know, you would, you would decide, at least hopefully earlier on, who you are, what you want out of life, and then you wouldn't be caught in that trapping, you know. So, speak to that. Speak to about societal expectations and how we deal with those. If you deviate from that, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah. yeah. Because, well, I don't really want to go to college. <gasps> what? Well, what are you going to do with your life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think I can sum it up all in one word, and that would be freedom. First of all, you know, freedom from what we're talking about, the expectations that everybody has for you. You know, we, we expect you to be a good little taxpayer to go get a good job, to support society, to support you know, government, and we expect you to contribute. It's not to contribute in the way you want to, it's to contribute in the way everybody else wants you to. Um, and then I think, also of course, in line with that, freedom from taxes. I mean, living in a city, you talk about living off grid, I mean, it's all expensive. It all can be expensive. But I think the difference is between living in a city and living, say, off-grid in a remote location is, at least the expenses you have are, more of them anyway, are ones of your choosing, not ones that are chosen for you. Yes, especially if you can live pretty self-sufficiently, if you can grow your own food more mm -hmm. than you can otherwise, if you have livestock or whatever. The town in which I live is 10% sales tax. So for every dollar worth of goods that I buy, I have to pay 10 cents into it. I, I understand that taxes go for some good things, but... Roads and bridges, you know. roads and bridges. Freedom from dependency and more freedom from debt. I think that goes along with the expectations part. Household debt is higher than it has ever been right now. And government debt is higher than it has ever been. And it's getting flat scary. I mean, it's getting really scary. Um, and so, I mean, it's almost like if you don't have debt, there's something wrong with you, you know? Um, you know, you're not, you're not with the program. You're not helping out society. You know, you're not, you're not supporting that plumber, you know, who can fix your pipes if you're doing it yourself. 
you know, why don't you just, <laughs> here we go, you know, why don't you just go out and buy yourself a backhoe instead of, you know, restoring this old thing. Society says, you know, go buy it, go get into debt, go get a job, go pay it, go work your nine to five, you know, get that car, um, you know, buy that house, take it from somebody who has lived, uh, you know, the so-called American dream. It's not all as dreamy as it seems. I think both of us do enjoy living as simply as we do in this little place. Mm -hmm. You know, living like we do, doing these projects, we have so much more fun and satisfaction and enjoyment than we ever would. Living in an HOA, in a big house, with mega debt and lawn care fixation, you know? So. Well, I never had the lawn care fixation you, know. you did. And the reason we bring this up is because we don't want you to think that, you know, we don't want you to think that the contentment channel has just become a, a DIY channel. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the reason we're restoring this backhoe is not to teach you how to restore a backhoe. And, you know, we've said in previous videos, some of you are maybe new and you might, you may not have um, seen some of the earlier videos, but we are just starting it. We are having to go from the ground up and the property contentment is in a, a different location. We're not able to go work every day, unfortunately. <clears throat> we have to do things here, preparing to go to the next step mm -hmm. and break ground there at contentment and be able to stay there more on location and build. Yeah, preparation is a big part of what we're doing. That's what you're seeing in our videos right now is, is our preparation to transition into that building that off-grid home and transition into that off-grid lifestyle. And it's gonna take some time. I mean, you've seen some of our videos where we can our food. Uh, we have entire shelves here in our pantry full of canned meat. Uh, <laughs> we're not just talking about garden veggies here that we're canning. I mean, we have pork, steak, roast, bacon, sausage. What don't, else do we have? Don't do the bacon don't or do sausage. Don't do the bacon or sausage. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's pretty much it. Ground beef. Ground beef, yeah. I mean, you've seen our videos on foraging like those wild plums. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, so that's uh, just, just to remind everyone, that's what our channel's about. It's not about restoring a backhoe or building a solar generator. We are doing those things, but they are they have a specific purpose, and they all point toward contentment. Contentment and getting away yeah. from our current city life mm -hmm. and the constant going and mm -hmm. noise, the train. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, let's be clear. Um, we're not anti-grid. I mean, in fact, we wouldn't be able to rebuild this backhoe were it not for the grid. Because it is the modern society, you know, living on grid and concentration in cities and concentration of resources that allows a backhoe to even be rebuilt um, or built in the first place, alone rebuilt. So, I mean, it is the grid. It is that access that we have to the internet that enables us to buy the repair kits, you know, we need to do this project. So. Don't misunderstand, we're not anti-grid, we're not anti-society. We enjoy society, we enjoy being sociable. Uh, and in fact, sometime this spring, we're trying to get something together here in our region for off-gridders and homesteaders to get together. So stay tuned for that. Yep. We're, we're not too keen on the government and the way it blows money. Um, or and, butts in. Yeah, or Sorry, butts I'm in, yeah. I'm sure that people who don't follow this sort of lifestyle look upon people in this lifestyle or whatever you want to call it as recluse reclusive hermits yeah whatever. hermits but i suspect that a lot of what the homesteading and off-grid movement is is just people making a statement that hey i want to live on my terms for a change i don't want to live according to someone else's dictates um, according to someone else's program and, uh, you know, I, I, I want to be able to take back and manage more of my own life. I mean, for heaven's sake, can I, do I have to buy eggs at the store? Can't I have a chicken? Is it okay if I collect the rainwater that falls on my own roof? <laughs> you know, stuff like that.
That's what you're saying. For as long as I can remember, I, I have always wanted a house in the country, and in fact, I had a house in the country, but it wasn't, but it didn't do it for me. And I think that's because my vision was not, of what I wanted was not complete. Um, but what I, what is clear, what I've always wanted is more independence, more freedom from uh, bureaucracy, more freedom from the thing that says, go here, do that, and then move on to the next project we set for you. There's no way to become totally off grid or to become, you know, totally independent or totally self-sustaining. I don't believe there is a way to do it. Um, unless you are going to live like a hermit. You know, if you want to live like John the Baptist, you know, eating locusts and wild honey and dressed in fur, you know, I suppose you could do that. As long as you're not worried about it, go for it. Anyway, that's the reason we're rebuilding back. <laughs> can you make can you make all of this into some one cohesive video, editor man? Sure, I can try. Do we talk around it? We always go all around and never really stay on track. We're just sort of digressing from the backhoe project for a minute, just to. Um, I don't know, return to our roots here for a moment. No, we have not totally lost track of, of what we're about here. So. But hey, let me show you this. Robber, this is the air cleaner off of the backhoe. And I mean, it looked like some of that other stuff you saw. Um, rusty and nasty and just ugly. And uh, Robber did an excellent job of restoring this thing. Um, we've got a new air filter to go in it. it. Goes in like that. Then there's a screw that goes on it to hold it in. But oh, can you? Yeah, I got it. Sorry, well, here, okay. let me hold this. I'm just like standing. And this here. snaps on like that. And then there's a little ring that goes across here to hold it on. So the air cleaner's ready to go. So far, we've got the air cleaner, oil filter. We've got the starter, starter the generator, and the generator. Um, all patched up and ready to go. The engine is still at the machine shop. Uh, they haven't looked at it yet. They're going to take a closer look at it and get back with me hopefully sometime here pretty quickly to let me know what the minimum is we could get away doing on it. Um, and then we'll just keep going with this project. Still got a lot to do, so we appreciate your viewership. We appreciate you. And uh, please, please, Right now, while you're while you're in front of the screen, if you would, click that like button if you liked our content. Please uh, ring the bell to be notified of new videos that are coming up, and please uh, please share and comment. Um, we we value your viewership. Um, we're a small channel, and you know we're really not interested in the money you know that comes with monetization because we don't want the government to have any more of it. But you know we we just enjoy the viewership and the comments and the encouragement. Oh, right. Like, subscribe, share. I don't really know. Like, subscribe, share. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great day. Bye.